Hey guys, Doug here from Motion Raceworks here today to talk about wastegates. So there's a lot of confusion, especially if you're new to turbocharging as far as what wastegate works best for my setup, how to set it up properly, what all the ports mean, and what the differences are between some of these different wastegates. Now we carry uh, three different brands in stock, Precision, JGS, and Turbo Smart, and they all are unique. They're all good products that we believe in and used properly they'll work great for your setup so i'll show you some of the differences in this video as well as uh, how to set it up for your car turbo smart now within each brand there's multiple sizes so precision has a 39 a 40 a 46 and a 66 millimeter wastegate jgs has a 40 50 and a 60 millimeter and turbo smart has a 40 45 50 and 60 millimeter so which one is correct for your combination uh i can go on for days about that but probably the easiest thing for something of that nature or that question is to just contact us directly our sales staff will be happy to help you size correctly um, you can oversize a wastegate you can also undersize a wastegate if you undersize it your car is going to make too much boost if you oversize it you'll never be able to make the boost that you want to because it's too much gate uh, for your combination so we've had luck with all three of these wastegates. They're both qual all three of them are quality products. Uh, the main difference that you'll see here are the height, um, and then obviously some design styles. So both the Precision and the Turbo Smart are diaphragm style wastegates. So what they have is a uh, rubber style silicone diaphragm in them, so that when pressure is added here versus via the manifold or CO2 or compressed air, it actually activates a diaphragm and it um, holds this valve close in the bottom of the wastegate. So both the Turbo Smart and the Precision are made with a diaphragm. The JGS, on the other hand, is actually piston actuated, and that's what makes up a lot of the extra height here. So there's actually a piston that moves up and down inside of here. Again, it moves the valve down here and uh, holds it closed via the piston. One of the unique things about the JGS is that there's no diaphragm to blow out. So when there's no diaphragm to blow out, that means that you can put as much pressure on that thing as you want and you don't have to worry about tearing or um, blowing up that diaphragm. So that's kind of the unique thing about JGS. Now Turbo Smart just released their new compressed gas style wastegate. So those are available in all of the different sizes. And what this does is they have an improved diaphragm design that allows you to put over 200 PSI on top of the dome. So the thing about that is if you have a combination that is um, struggling to make boost but can make boost you need to put more pressure on a diaphragm to make more boost um, because uh, putting a standard one-to-one -one, which is kind of a general concept isn't enough to make it make that boost so it's kind of a better way of forcing the boost so if you're not familiar with wastegates the general concept of this this is going to be plumbed off of your header or the pipe going to your turbo so what a wastegate does is it allows, this is a port that's gonna be coming off your header or the pipe that goes to your turbo. And this valve actually opens, so you can see it opens and allows exhaust through it. So what this does is it allows the turbo to spool less hard um, to drain off the exhaust uh, pressure. And what this does is it makes sure you don't make 30 pounds of boost when you don't wanna make 30 pounds of boost. Uh, on the opposite end of the spec, so the exhaust is actually going to come in here and out here, and this is either going to dump to the atmosphere underneath the car, outside the bumper, or some guys plummet back into their uh, downpipes. Now the opposite of that is that sometimes you want to hold that valve closed so you can spool the car or make more power overall. Um, and that's where the ports for the wastegate come into play. So basically what we're doing is we're introducing, um, you'll see this has a spring effect to it. And so in this top hat, there's a spring on all these different wastegates. And um, you know, this spring on the compressed gates is three and a half pounds. On this one, it comes loaded. Um, they all have different spring rates that can come with it. But generally speaking, if you have a 10 pound spring, it's gonna make 10 pounds of boost. Um, so what happens when you want to do to make 20 pounds of boost? Well, you have to put uh, pressure on top of the top hat. And the one thing all three of these have in common, even though they're different in nature, is they all have a port on the top of the wastegate. So that basically puts pressure pushing down on this valve to hold the valve closed uh, when you want to make more boost or you want to spool the engine up. 
and uh, there's two or three, I guess there's three different ways to put pressure on it. Uh, plumb a line from your manifold uh, with a solenoid in, uh, line, which will open and close. Um, with manifold pressure, the general rule of thumb that you can make twice the amount of spring pressure. So if I have a 10 pound spring in one of these wastegates, I can make 20 pounds of boost by putting uh, manifold pressure in there. The other thing is folks use CO2 or compressed air. So some guys have onboard air compressors and they put air on it. And you can put as much as you want up until obviously 200 PSI or um, whatever. So if I put 50 PSI in addition to the 10, generally speaking, you're gonna have 60 pounds of boost. Now, depending on your combination, um, how everything's built and plumbed, you'll have variances, but that's just uh, vehicle specific. So the other port that is on a wastegate, and all of them have it, is the bottom port. And basically this is on the opposite side of the piston or diaphragm, if that makes sense. So basically this port pushes the piston upward. Um, so for most applications um, that aren't an application where you're trying to make every pound of boost, you'll have a port that goes straight from the intake manifold or the turbo compressor housing straight to here. Uh, this helps to prevent overboost situations. This also helps um, open the wastegate back up. So the other unique thing about the Turbo Smart wastegates is that they actually have a water port in here. So basically, this will help cool this whole um, housing. So if you have uh, wastegates that are in tight spots between the engine and turbo, and there, you have a chance of them overheating, uh, what you can do is run water lines in and out of that. It's kind of a unique little thing. Uh, so generally speaking, um, I get a lot of phone calls from day to day and people say, well, which one is correct for my combination? It's kind of like the Ford Chevy debate. Uh, I'd say they all work. I've seen all three of these on top tier uh, turbocharge applications. So a lot of it is the aesthetics. Um, do you want it to be water cooled? Do you not? Uh, where does it lay out cost? There's different price ranges for all of this stuff. and. Uh, a lot of that depends on uh, you know what you're trying to do with it and what um, what you look for in wastegates and layout. One of the unique things about the Turbo Smart that I really like is how low profile it is. So it doesn't look a whole lot um, less uh, tall than the Precision does, but all of these wastegates, when you actually go to plumb them up, you need to have a um, pressure transducer on the top. So generally speaking, we use this brass T, which is included in our CO2 kit. And you're either going to have a eighth inch NPT fitting here, or you're going to have a sensor here. So this gets rather tall as you go. Um, and then as far as the JGS goes, this one also is just tall in general. So one of the cool things that TurboSmart did is they made it not only low profile, but they have the ports coming out low on the top. So you can actually screw this little brass uh, T in here and run your pressure transducer um, right here. So basically you're effectively shrinking the whole thing down by a good bit. Um, they put two ports on the top, which is very nice because you actually don't need a T unless you're trying to save that space. You could just run your uh, transducer straight onto this one and you could run your uh, feed fitting right here onto this one. And to me, I've encountered a lot of tight engine bays as you will as well. And uh, that makes a huge difference in the whole layout of your setup. So one of the age old debates is, do I need a big single way skater or do I need two small ones? And the answer is, it depends because on a ultra street car or an x275 car generally speaking those guys are like trying to pin the wastegate shut from 0.5 seconds on so they're not trying to bleed off a ton of um, excess pressure but that might uh, vary if you have a high horsepower car and you want to control a lot of power if you're doing no prep racing where you want to leave on five pounds and put 50 pounds on the car down the track then yeah you're going to need to control as much um, airflow as possible so for that reason I generally just suggest people run twin wastegates and it gives you a lot better control. So now you're not trying to merge the pipe and then also merge the uh, wastegate itself. You can just put a wastegate off of each header, optimally place them so that they'll flow the air through um, and catch everything it needs to. And you have enough that you can get rid of all the exhaust that you don't want 
and control the power. And for most applications, especially small tire stuff, controlling the amount of boost, controlling the power is one of the most important things. You can do less with more if you can get off the line, if you can make a boost ramp that gets you down the track every time and controls the power, that's important. Um, so for that, I usually just tell people, whether you have a single turbo setup, with twins you have to run two wastegates. If you have a single turbo setup, just run twins. It'll save you a lot of time and hassle and it doesn't make uh, plumbing it and running all of the tubing, it's not such a, a careful science at that point and you don't have to just hope that you had enough. So the next question I get with dual wastegates is, how do I hook them up? I only have two solenoids. So here's your general two solenoid setup. Uh, a lot of guys use Mac valves, Humphrey valves. There's a new bullet Mac valve out there. So whether you're running a single setup or a twin setup, we made this nice little bracket here um, for mounting them. You used to have to kind of drill holes and try and make your own bracket, but this bracket's pretty sweet for 20 bucks, $24.99. Um, you'll like it and appreciate that we showed it to you. Um, but generally speaking, you need one set of solenoids, whether you're running a single wastegate or twins. And how does that work? So your feed line from your CO2 regulator is gonna come into this port right here. Uh, check out this diagram I'm posting right now. So your feed line is gonna come into this port right here. And basically what's gonna happen is when you want to increase boost, it lets flow through to here, which goes out to here. This, this line is going to your wastegates. Um, if it's trying to bleed off your uh, CO2 or compressed air or manifold, it's going to let it out here, which is basically an exhaust. So feed in, exhaust out. Um, so this line would go to your single wastegate, but it's also going to go to your twin wastegate. Um, basically, you want your wastegates operating in tandem. Um, so what we do is any line that would normally go to one wastegate just goes to two. You put a T like this in line with your push to connect, and then you run one line this way and one line this way. So what this does is it balances the pressure between the wastegates because the last thing you want is one side of the engine making 20 pounds of boost and one side of it making 30. Um, or at least pinning the gate shed on that level because you're gonna just have a real hard time with everything it's between tuning to all the way to boost control. So this is how you set it up. Also the bottom ports as well, um, you tee those and straight to the manifold as well. And a lot of people ask if you need two pressure transducers. No, because these lines are gonna equalize so fast that likely the computer is not gonna get, get it as fast. So you can put your sensor on one way skate, tee the lines to the other side, and that's how you set up a twin turbo uh, compressed air CO2 or manifold pressure setup. Since the Precision and the JGS do not have two ports, a guy could actually drill and port tap another hole on either side. Anywhere on these domes is typically fine. You just want to inspect the bottom to make sure there's no spring pockets or whatever. Um, but an easy solution to that, if you're trying to put a sensor on top of it, whether it's a single or twin, is to put one of these brass tees on it. Um, I always use this style brass tee. It's strong. Uh, Sebastian from AMS 2000 showed me that a long time ago. The last thing you want to do is put a cheap aluminum or steel one because the weight of this will actually bounce and break that uh, T off. And, you know, you're going into the final round of eliminations. You don't want that thing to break off, which is why we include it in our CO2 kit. So whether you have the sensor on top or the sensor on the side, this allows you to have your port in and your sensor in the same location. And that's also why we include it in the CO2 kit. So if you haven't seen these push to connect hoses, we sell them, a lot of people sell them. We like the ones we use, we've tested them a million times and they don't leak. The biggest problem is some of the cheap versions of these leak. The Chinese crap ones you get off eBay, they're plastic, they leak all over the place. And basically I think that's how CO2 boost control got a bad rap. This would leak out and one bottle would be gone in a day. If you get good quality fittings that uh, don't leak, a CO2, a two and a half pound CO2 bottle lasts forever and ever. I mean, I'll have it last a full year. You're not using a ton of it. Um, another thing that I should note is use good quality line that's thermal resistant and a good set of cutters that are sharp and will uh, slice through the line and not leave an edge. These ones came from Menards, I think, and they're I think they're PEX cutters from the plumbing department, but you'll see when I squeeze down on them, it leaves a perfect edge. Uh, if you try to cut this with a pocket knife, it'll leave something. And then when you stick it in there, 
with the, the wrong edge, it's not gonna, it's gonna either hold it open, not seat properly, but that thing just goes in there nice and uh, smooth and it gives you a good edge. And that's the key to keeping a CO2 system that lasts forever without having to refill it. So the last question I get is, should I run a single solenoid setup or should I run dual? So with that, whether you're running a CO2 or compressed air, I always say run a dual. This gives you the ability to put um, air in and air out. With a single solenoid, your ups and downs are a lot slower or less controllable. This is gonna actively monitor the pressure on the gate so that when you're trying to make 10 pounds of pressure on the gate, you're actually making 10 pounds of pressure on the gate. It's gonna in and out to equalize that and hit its actual target. So whether you're running an EFI system or an external boost controller like an AMS 2000 or a hyperactive or something, um, it'll give you the ability to do that. So I always suggest running a twin uh, solenoid system. So these are example of the springs that come with uh, precision wastegates. Um, you'll put either a combination, one or multiple of these springs in on the top hat. When you unscrew this top hat, there will be a spring inside of there. Um, they come preloaded with a spring, but they have a chart that tells you if you wanna put 10 pounds on there, um, put these two springs in. If you wanna make 15, put this. Now that's not a perfect rule of thumb because depending on uh, how things are plumbed and how, what size motor you're using compared to the gate size, it might make above or below that, but that's always a general good starting point. The best thing on a new combo is to just run it with no nothing on top of the gate and see how much boost it makes. That'll give you a good idea of um, this. So this will be your base. Um, when you add 10 pounds of CO2, it's gonna be uh, 10 pounds in addition to whatever it made with nothing hooked up. So if it makes, if you have a seven pound spring in it and it makes nine pounds of boost, you're gonna say that's a nine pound spring now. And then I add 10 pounds, it's 19 pounds. So um, that's kind of a little breakdown on this. Now be careful when you're disassembling these, depending on what they're loaded with, you need to have a buddy or put this in a vise with soft jaws and undo these and slowly let it apart. It'll shoot that top hat right through the roof hit you in the face. Uh, everybody's had it happen one time or another. So we'll do a few more videos on CO2 uh, wastegate control and wastegates in general in the future. But this gives you a good start and understanding of not only how the wastegates work, but the differences in the three that we sell. And like I said before, everybody has their own preferences. We'd be happy to discuss your combination and pick out the right wastegate for you. So thanks for tuning in to another episode of Motion 360. Our goal here is to educate you. So if you're switching from nitrous or supercharger or it's your first build, um, it all makes more sense. So thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned. We got more to come.